By the end of part nine of the Ray Lab 2D challenge, I had Scarf here running and jumping all over the terrain, which is great and all, it's an achievement, but kind of boring, right? The only things he can do is jump and run. So that's what I want to fix today. Uh, today I'd like to add some coins for him to collect. Let's get started. Oh yeah, and apologies for how long it's taken for this video to be released. Life has been absolutely crazy for us since part nine, making getting things done kind of challenging. Anyway, let's, let's go ahead and get started. I could do what I did with Scarfy and create a new coin class, which would load in my rotating coin animation. And that would work and be quite quick initially, but it would quickly get rather tedious. I mean, imagine having to create a new class for every single type of object. And then you're talking with your artist, you want to add a new animation to a particular object, or maybe the number of frames needs to change and you have to coordinate very tightly to keep the code synchronized with the imagery. Uh, yeah, not my idea of fun. So instead, let's use a technique known as a texture atlas, which is where you take the frames of animation and you pack them into a single image or texture and you have some additional data that tells you which frame is where. Now, if you look at Scarfy, Scarfy is already a sort of texture atlas, but it's missing the data file or the embedded data to tell you which frame is where. That information is currently hard coded into the Scarfy class. So that's not what we want. Instead, let's use Ray's texture packer. So here is the texture packer. We will get our coin animation. I'll take the downscaled one and drop it in. And you see it's nicely packed them to take up a minimum amount of space. We do not need a texture this big. So let's drop it down to, I think it should fit into, a, yes, it fits into a 128 by 128 texture. The next step that you would do, um, which I've already done, so I'll, I'll skip over it, would be for each of these um, frames, you need to pick the origin, which I have already put at the center. And once you've done that, so yeah, I can, Stick that in the center once, roughly. Once you've done that, then you go down, export the atlas, and bring the file into your game. The texture packer delivers this nice looking texture with all our frames packed in. And also a texture atlas descriptor file. So this is the bit that was missing for Scarfy. This descriptor file tells us exactly where each of the frames is within this image. So we already have code to load this texture up. What we need to do now is to pass this file. And unsurprisingly, I have created a texture atlas class and I've also come up with a naming scheme. So if you look here, you'll see coin underscore default underscore and then a number. The way this works is I don't need it for the coin necessarily, but for, let's say you've got a character. The character might have multiple animations. So you might have a standing animation, a running, a walking, crouching, jumping, uh, whatever it is. So the first part of the frame's name is the object type. We can call it the sprite. Uh, the next part is which animation for this object this frame is a part of. And then the final number at the end, that's the frame number within the animation. So in doing it this way, we can pack multiple animations for an object or even multiple animations for multiple objects into one texture atlas. Now, because this is a straightforward text file with a very specific structure, it's relatively easy to pass. We, we open the file and we scan for, actually, let's go back to this. We scan for the first letter in each row. If it's an A, then we have an atlas info line, and there should be one of those in the file. If it's an S, then it's describing a sprite frame. So in code, we basically look for the first letter in a, a line, and then use fscanf to pull in all of the individual numbers and in, in, in bits, as you can see here. And with that all loaded in, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. I don't want to go through the code too much. There's a, there are multiple subclasses, actually. I have a texture atlas sprite. Where is it? TA sprite, 
a sprite animation because as I say each sprite or object can have multiple animations and then a sprite animation frame a TA frame and also a special player class that will play back at a set rate uh, that's just to reduce the amount of code duplication that you've got elsewhere okay so that is the texture atlas loading and displaying code done now it's time to actually use it and if you look on the left column of my screen you will see there's a new collectible class again I don't want to be writing a new class for every single object type in the game uh, whether something is a bronze coin a gold coin a diamond emerald whatever if it's an item that the player can collect it's a collectible and the functionality is the same so a collectible so long as there's a texture atlas with a default animation for the collectible and an option optional collect animation then it can be used as a collectible uh, code wise I don't really want to go through this in any detail the collectible class will uh, load in an atlas file and find the animation uh, sorry the object that it's looking for and in our case we would type name would be coin and it would load coin.rtpa and it'll find the correct animation that the default animation it'll look for the collect animation which we didn't create and then there's code here to animate it there's an update method there's a draw method to draw it and we create a simple physics body so that it can interact with the world the final step is to add the coins to the scene and this is where I'm going to for, for speed I'm just going to hard code it in and Scarfy scene I have added a loop here to randomly drop 200 coins into the world with that code in there let's run it now and see the end result If you use the code that you can download below this video for an actual game, then sooner or later you will find your load times increasing and graphics cards with less memory will start running out of memory and the entire thing will slow down. That's because if you look at the code, you'll see that for every coin, the entire texture atlas is loaded into video RAM again. So for 200 coins, you've got 200 copies of the exact same texture. If you double that to 400 coins, you're going to have 400 copies needless to say that is a gigantic waste and a recipe for disaster sooner or later what you need is a resource manager so that whatever you're loading whether it's a, a texture a model or anything else that if more than one object in the game uses it it's only loaded in at once and that one copy is shared amongst all of them now I haven't written that code because I don't really need it for this challenge we're not going to make anything big enough to need it but you have been warned now it did take a bit of trial and error to get this right as is often the case but now that that's done let's start the game and here come the coins rotating animated nicely uh, however as you'll see here I can't actually collect them I can just push them around that's because the coin interaction code or the coin collection code hasn't been written yet I ran out of time and I really didn't want to delay this video any further so that is for next time I will see you then